Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, December 29th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle along with my colleagues Patrick Murphy and Steve Hellwagon here in Dallas. It is finally game day. It's great to say that. Um, let's go around the table here and talk about what we expect tonight. And we'll give our final score predictions later in the show. But I just just from a, a general perspective, Patrick Murphy, what do you expect to see from the Buckeyes tonight? They've been such a bipolar team all season. What do you expect to see tonight, Patrick? I think this team will be be the one that, that fans wanted to see all year. You know, you've had three plus weeks since the Big Ten Championship game to to really look at USC, you know, get excited for this game and and I do believe that they're excited. I think USC is a team that that, you know, registers on their radar. This isn't, you know, Central Florida or some somebody like that that they could have ended up playing. Um it's it's a team that, you know, there's history between these two and I, I expect this to be another good game between you know, two sides that used to play each other relatively frequently out in the Rose Bowl. This time they'll do it in Dallas. Um, you know, a shootout, I think, is is likely. Um, USC's offense is, is very good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Buckeyes try and slow that down. And, and then on the other side, I think Ohio State will be able to move the ball against USC. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see, you know, both teams scoring multiple touchdowns and, and kind of, you know, up and down the field. And, and just a fun game, which... You know, in a bowl game where there's really not a ton on the line, I think that's what you want as you know a fan of either team, and then ideally you want your team to win. Yeah, I think you make some great points there, Pat. I'm I'm kind of on board with a lot of what you said. I think that uh, in the world that we live in today, <clears throat> it's a uh, playoff or bust type situation. And Urban Meyer, I think, in one of his comments today, uh, kind of reveled in the idea that they've been in the hunt for the championship or the playoff. Every year uh, since he's been here, and they've been eligible, obviously in 2012 they were undefeated but ineligible, but really they've been in the discussion in in the last week of the season uh, every time uh, since he's been the head coach at Ohio State. And this represents a, a chance as well, and this is something psychologically, I guess, uh, to get to 12 wins, uh, Ohio State's done that only seven times previously. That would be a nice accomplishment to get to 12 wins. And, and probably just as important, avoid a third loss. Ohio State's never had a three-loss season under Urban Meyer in his previous five seasons. So uh, there's a lot out there, uh, a lot of bragging rights type stuff between the Big Ten and the Pac-12. The Big Ten uh, is doing doing reasonably well in the bowls this year. So uh, hopefully the Buckeyes can carry that over as well. But uh, again, we live in a playoff or bust society, which is unfortunate because we have seen a lot of great bowl games uh, already this year, and, and it's an outstanding opportunity for these kids to get out there in the national spotlight one more time. For some of them, this will be their last game as Buckeyes, and I know about half the fan base is excited that it is JT Barrett's last game, so those people will get uh, their their wish and more after today. Oh, yeah, the, the great quarterback debate. Uh, next year it will be, well, should Haskins be playing or Burrow, if Burrow's still around, or Martell. Um, that's never going to end, but, um, let's break down this matchup a little more. I mean, we look at, you know, both offenses are highly ranked Ohio state, number six in the country in total offense. USC is 16th in the country, Ohio state, the only team in the country that's top 10 in both total offense and total defense. Buckeyes come in with the number eight total D in the country. USC again, number 16, total offense. Very good. Um, Sam Darnold, excellent quarterback. One thing as an outlier here is USC's defense, 77th in the country. And, you know, that's the one area. I mean, they, it seems like very evenly matched team. Steve, I know you've talked a lot about this. That's the one area where USC is really susceptible is their defense is lacking for sure. 
Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think uh, as I reviewed their last game against Stanford, they won the Pac-12 championship game 31-28. to And they had a comfortable lead at times in that game and allowed Stanford uh, with, to hit a couple big plays and get back in that game. So, you know, you think about what uh, Stanford accomplished in that game and then uh, what Ohio State did against what was supposed to be the nation's number one defense, Wisconsin, which – uh, proved to be somewhat fraudulent because, as we all know, they had not played anybody of note. And so uh, they had four plays of 50 yards or longer against Wisconsin, the bomb to McLaurin, the two long runs by uh, Dobbins, and, and Barrett left two touchdown passes out there with Dixon and uh, K.J. Hill. So uh, to me, there's going to be plays that can be made, and that is my – obvious you know sore thumb that kind of sticks out is that matchup of Ohio State's offense which has been at times almost unstoppable uh, going against uh, USC's defense yeah Pat I want you to comment on on all of that as far as like the matchup and, and you know the national rankings and maybe how Ohio State will have that that advantage when they're on offense um, and also down here in Dallas you know I'm getting a good vibe from the players I know a lot of fans are concerned that the players might not be motivated for the game tonight. I mean, talking to these guys all week here in Dallas, I feel like they're very motivated. Um, but just talk about what you expect as far as USC's defense and if Ohio State's going to come in motivated. The the one thing about USC's defense that I do like from from a Trojans perspective is their defensive front. You know, they're tied for second in the country for sacks. Um, you know, they're they're up there in tackles for a loss. Similarly ranked with the Buckeyes there. So I think that's one area where you know, they, they might be able to, to do some things. Now, Ohio State's offensive line has been very good, has improved throughout the season, so much so that Urban Meyer started to put it in a similar vein as that 2014 offensive line. Um, I don't think it's quite that good, but, you know, so so it'll be interesting to watch kind of that battle in the trenches, and, and that's maybe somewhere USC will be able to have a little bit of success. Um, in terms of the, 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 you know, hype for this game around the team, their, their expectations and, and how focused they are on it, I agree with you, Dave. Talking to these guys, I think there's there's an excitement. Like I said before, I think that USC grabs their attention um, as an opponent, and I think that you know there are plenty of these guys that are playing their last game, like Steve said. So we're we're gonna see, I think, a motivated team that wants to go out on top. But the one thing is, I think I get the same same type of mo- type of motivation from USC. I think they you know have the have the same thing. I think the difference could be. Ohio State's laid eggs on the national scene outside of the Big Ten conference. Um, you know, we saw it with Oklahoma. We obviously saw it in Clemson last year. Uh, you know, it's it's they 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 kind of need a game like this to prove, hey, you know, some of those games we we weren't we weren't the right team. Uh, a win over USC, I think, is a win that everyone around the country is going to respect, especially if you do it in convincing fashion. Um, and you know, that kind of sets you up for next year where, you know, your marquee game outside of the conference is, is TCU. So you don't have that opportunity to really showcase yourself. You want to you wanna do it against the team. Now, obviously, the players change and whatnot, but at least that leaves a good mark, a good memory in people's minds as, as you head into next season. I think that is a little bit of a factor for these guys. All right, gentlemen, brass tacks. Game tonight. Um, Patrick, you'll go first, then Steve, and I'll go. I'll uh, bat third. Um Give me a final score prediction. How do you think this is going to play out? What's going to happen tonight, Patrick? I uh, I would I like the idea that, that they're going to have a little bit of back and forth in this game. I think you know, as I said before, I think both teams are going to be able to move the ball a good amount. You've got a future NFL quarterback in Sam Darnold, who uh, I think you know can can pick on the Ohio State secondary a little bit, out, especially outside of Denzel Ward, assuming you know we see him, um, which we think we will. I, I think they can move the ball. I think Ohio State will be able to move the ball as well. The combination of the running game. Um, I think JT Barrett can have a big day passing the ball because I don't believe in this USC secondary. So, you know, I can see it go back and forth. Um, my final score was 38 to 30. So, you know, I think that kind of reflects you're going to see a high scoring game with, with both teams kind of having opportunities to, to pull away. But I think Ohio State ends up uh, getting the job done. Yeah, I would agree with you again. I think. Uh, to me, it's a parallel to the Notre Dame game two years ago when they had Deshaun Kaiser, and uh, we looked at it and thought, hey, this is going to be kind of an offensive explosion type game. I just think Ohio State's going to make more plays against uh, the USC defense than the USC offense. 
is going to make against Ohio State's defense. And again, uh, it's all one up front. The two games Ohio State lost, Oklahoma and Iowa, they were handled up front uh, pretty convincingly by the Sooners and the Hawkeyes. I'm not sure uh, uh, the USC offensive line has that type of an advantage uh, to be able to do that. Uh, their defensive line is pretty stout, and in fact, I think USC is among the national leaders in sacks. So if they get pressure on JT Barrett and force him to make some mistakes, just as he did in the, the Wisconsin game, uh, and you know they end up with three turnovers or something silly like that, that would be uncharacteristic, of course. But uh, that's the kind of thing that would keep USC in this game. But I just think Ohio State's got too much for them. I'm going to go Ohio State 41-28 and uh, JT Barrett one more. Command performance on his way out the door. Uh, I think J.K. Dobbins is going to have a big game. And my pick to click at wide receiver, uh, man, Austin Mack has been kind of quiet lately. Maybe maybe he gets off and does some big things. But uh, And I've got uh, Denzel Ward is going to have a, a good game on defense. Uh, I have him as my defensive player of the game. Maybe a pick to wrap up his OSU career and send him on to the NFL perhaps. Uh, in this game. So, yeah, I want to see some big things out of the Buckeyes uh, tonight uh, here in the Big D in the Cotton Bowl. All right, so Buckeyes favored by seven and a half. Um, I have the Buckeyes winning this game, but not covering barely. I have them winning by seven, 34 27. My colleagues set this up very well. They hit on, on all the main points. I just feel like the team that is more motivated is going to win this game. Ohio State has more talent. Um, I feel like Ohio State's. I don't feel this way. I, I would bet my life Ohio State is the better coach team. You can tell me Clay Helton's a better coach than Urban Meyer. You can tell me, you know, USC's assistant coaches are better than guys like Greg Schiano, Kevin Wilson, Larry Johnson. No, absolutely not. Ohio State has the coaching advantage. They have the talent advantage. If Ohio State comes in, they're able to match USC's intensity or top it. Ohio State will win. If for some reason they go in there and they feel like they're still sulking because they didn't make the playoffs, they're not locked in. They could get hammered, but I do think Ohio State will come in locked in. USC has a lot of future NFL talent on their team. Um, the fact they got blown up by Notre Dame, I think, is really a blemish on, on there because you can't blame that on, oh, well, you know, like Ohio State's Iowa game. We've all said this, even though this isn't really an excuse. Oh, they're coming off the emotional win against Penn State. They don't really respect Iowa. USC and Notre Dame is a rivalry game. For them to get just boat raced in that game says a lot about USC to me. I know it's one game, but I like the Buckeyes tonight, 34-27. Thank you very much to my colleagues here in our hotel room, um, which really needs to be fumigated, I think, at this point after a full week here. Um, Steve Hellwagon and Patrick Murphy. I am Dave Biddle, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. Enjoy the game tonight. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Yeah.